Hi everybody, we're going to discuss and talk a little bit about the rudiments, which is a subject that I've been studying for many, many years. I was lucky enough to study with a great teacher that knew a lot about the rudiments, such as Alan Dasson or Bruce Baker, who taught me the kind of so-called Freddy Gruber system. And I studied classical percussion with Maestro David Cersei, timpani player for the La Scala Theater here in Milano. You know, this would be a long subject, so I just a few tips. The, the stick is not just this. It's not only one direction going to the tip, but the, the stick has two sides. And all the great technicians from Badiris to Joe Morello, Vinny Calayuta, they Weckl, you name it, they all use this kind of approach that they call the seesaw. So this is not something I'm inventing at the moment, it's something really old. Billy Gleston used to talk about it, Marie Spivak, who taught Luis Belson, you know, fulcrum balance point, you know, just watch the Jojo Mayer DVD, talks a lot about this. So, if there are two directions, I like to think of the fact that you can go both directions. And to me, you can go underneath the drum, you can drop the stick, and go toward the drum, you can go, so to speak, on top of the drum. So, down, drop, which is, this is down, with, they call it down stroke, using the Muller whipping action. This is the tap stroke, but it is a tap stroke, but actually it's a, you know, you use gravity. You fall to the drum, and then you raise the stick from the back. So, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. Why am I saying this? Because, for instance, if we if we were to uh, break down a paradiddle, that's what I would do for somebody who never saw a paradiddle before. First of all, you know, most people would know that a paradiddle is a combination of the two basic rudiments or, you know, hand motions you can have, which is hand-to-hand, -hand, single strokes, or, you know, double stroke roll to strokes each hand. So the paradiddle meets both ends with you know, single, single, double, single, single, double. You know, usually for beginners, but not, not only beginners actually, I see the paradiddle being performed as follows. Something like this. In other instances, some, you know, some guys have, that have better developed hands and they use the fingers as well, which is inside the hand, I, I see this. You see this motion. So this is giving me a decent speed and uh, you know, a decent technique, but actually it doesn't sound really good because many reasons. First of all, the, the stick is choked. And I get stiff because I'm just using, as I was mention, mentioning earlier, the tip, the front part of the stick. I'm not using the seesaw approach, which once again I did not invent, but it was invented way before I even knew about the drums. You know, rudiments per se are meaningless if we are not able to translate them into music. So this is what it really is. I've always tried to learn and teach for making music. And this is not music. Not enough, at least. For some kind of music. You know, there's type of music that are more stiff, and uh, that's good, but if you want to play like what I play, like jazz-oriented stuff, you know, more groove music and black music, you need a little bit more space between the notes. And this approach doesn't give enough space. This is really what it is for me. You know, the right spacing between the notes, which I always admired in great players such as Steve Gadd and, you know, and those type of players. So I really rudimentally very prepared, you know, they have a lot of rudiment, great technique with their rudiments, but they, you know, they have groove. That's the main thing, to groove no matter what you play. So the way I like to perform it and to teach it and that I see great drummers play, whether they know it or not, but that's what they do. Basic, you know, body motions. Down, up, drop, bounce. Down, up, drop, bounce. 
And if you learn this, it's actually much, you know, it takes some effort, effort at first, but then it's much easier than just doing tap, tap, tap all the way through, down, underneath the drum, up, on top of the drum, drop bounce. And you notice I'm not, you know, using a tempo yet because I'm just performing basic body motion. If I start to go a little faster, all of a sudden, it goes into a tempo. And you know, already, this is not the fastest I can get. I will go a little faster than this, but you can already see how it looks and sounds better than with this approach. I'm using the rebound that everybody talks about. I use the gravity. Down, up, tap, tap. But really, there are two tap strokes, but what the motion is drop bounce. I'm dropping the stick and letting it bounce. Letting it bounce. So paradiddle number one, or single paradiddle, as they call it, from slow to fast. When I go faster, of course, the motions get smaller. And when I go real fast, everything is kind of small, the sticks are parallel, and it's more inside of the hand. And I want to make another point. Whatever for traditional grip players such as me, whatever we do with those fingers inside the hand, you know, the push and pull motion or, you know, all this stuff, whatever we do with these fingers in the, you know, German grip or match grip position, we do with the index finger in the traditional grip. They have the same role. To me, single stroke roll goes through, a, a, you know, a procedure where I use three gears. First of all, I always use rebound, no matter what the speed is. What I, what I mean is that when I start very slow, I play full strokes, which are, the full stroke is a stroke that starts from the top, from a high position and goes back to a high position. And when I do this, I use the all technique of catching the bounce that everybody talks about. And, uh, you know, Dan Formulara calls this technique the free stroke. That's a way to call it. Or stop at the top, that's another way. And uh, so I accept the rebound of the stick and follow it, basically. I don't do one, two, two motions, but only one motion. And this is the first gear for me. If I go a little faster, gradually, you know, always catching the bounce, and I'm still in the free stroke range, or rate, better yet. Now I'm kind of shifting to second gear, which is always a free stroke, but the main difference is that when I go really slow, the stick is not always in motion, and I can't do this. The stick, I have to stop the stick. But when I shift to the second gear of like medium speed, which is the speed where we, where they, we use most of the time to me. I'm doing the same thing, but now the stick is always in motion. And that's, this is, you know, what they call bouncing the ball, because it's just, it feels like bouncing the ball. This is the ball, the tip of the stick. Okay, when I, I audition new students, most of the times they do this. And they say, I can go any faster than this. That's the reason, because they don't know how to shift to third gear, which is the same technique of, you know, bouncing the stick, but 
when you go, you know, try to go real fast, you cannot use the hand anymore. It's too much motion, it's too much body involved. So you have to shift to smaller muscles and you use finger. So it's the same thing, but just less body involved. And to do this action, it's not that difficult when you learn how to balance the stick because all you do is this. You know, it doesn't take a genius to do this. To go back, instead of, you know, chalking the stick and all of a sudden hitting the brakes, I can, you know, learn to shift gears backwards. In order to have a smooth transition, so that means that you learn to never choke the stick when you play, to never do this. But it's always, you're always catching the bounce from slow to fast and more difficult yet, back to slow. Using the shifting gears concept. Second gear. Going toward the third gear. Third gear. Going toward the second gear. So I'm using my hand a little bit more, as you can tell. I always catch the bounce and then go back to the free stroke. For those of you who saw the first lesson where I mentioned the drop bounce technique, where I said that I just drop the stick and let it bounce, and look what happens. This is the trick in a way. I let the stick open my hand. I don't open it really, but I follow the stick, which is another way of thinking about accepting the rebound. So in order to perform a, a second stroke, I just close the hand. It's very simple. Open and close. At least conceptually simple. Of course, the hand needs to get used to it. Traditional grip, you know, is a bit more involved. We'll need a longer explanation, but what I do is open the finger here, open the index finger here, opening and close. and the index finger reacts to the bounces. You know, dropping the stick, letting it bounce, reacting to the, you know, you see that my index fingers, I'm not using it. In this case, I'm using it. In this other case, it's the stick that moves my finger. It looks the same, but it's not the same. You know, if I learn to do this and then to perform a less, the last stroke with my closing the hand, with a, with a squeezing motion, And I do it, you know, like this, bounce, catch. All of a sudden you get this, and you get this over here. It should sound open. That's why they call it open roll. As opposed to the closed roll, which is the press roll, but it is an open roll because it was performed the military music and I, you know you can do it with wrist of course when it's slow but I want to do it with bounces just to show how that works but you can do it with you know wrist perfectly fine when it's slow and if you need a staccato sound that's how you should do it but in this case I would, you know I don't worry about that so from slow to fast So it's fast, but really my hands are doing this. And back to slow. There's another way that I like to call that, you know, drum set way of playing it, which is more, you know, a master of this is, of course, Ged, but they work a lot. I learned this from him where he plays a very, you know, Jack Dijonet and Elvin Jones, they play big open double strokes around the set, very effective sound. And uh, the way 
I learned this from Dave Weckl is to start first of all to start on the you know on the up beat M1 not on the down beat one end but M1 and two and three and there's this uh, circular motion that helps keep you know keep the strokes more open and it will sound like this M1 Philly Joe Jones used to have all of these circular motions in his playing. And you hear the sound, how it's more open than the other way, the drum bounce. Especially on the tom-toms, you know, floor toms, mounted tom-toms, it sounds much bigger. So the drag is an embellishment of two small notes. And the thing is, you have to play them on the beat, not before the beat, but right on the beat. And it should be very small and very at a very low level, but very clear. It can be like, like a press roll. So I call it a small double stroke. And you see, to do this, I use the same technique that I use for double strokes you know, with the index finger on the traditional grip and those fingers on the match grip, but is at a very low level. The left side drag will sound like this from slow to fast. The rate or the speed of the drag never changes. It just, be, you know, occurs more often while you go faster with the main note that you are abolishing. That means that when you go kind of fast and there, there is less space between the notes, you know, the drag is taking all the space. But it is not a triplet. It sounds like a triplet, but it's the same rate. Now I'll do it from the on the right side, and you hear it do it from slow to fast, and back to slow, so. Watch the fingers, if you can see them at all, inside the hand, open and close. Watch the level of the height, it's never, you know, it's maybe two inches. No more than that. That's the, you know, the thing that I, I had a hard time with, trying to learn it, when I started, you know, when I was studying with Alan Dawson. So as you can see, the sticks travel together, but from different heights. So this, this gives you the right timing. It's not too early or too late. It's basically double strokes with a drag inside. And it goes like this. Very important, the stick heights. You know, the full strokes, the down strokes, and the up strokes have to be right in place. So, see the full down up strokes, and the drags, they always stay down to a low position. And this is something that at first is difficult to control. When I start to go a little faster, the double strokes become like swing, they become swung notes. It's not straight notes anymore, but they sound like this, you hear it. Okay, I'm starting to swing the notes.
come back to event nodes. This is a very common rudiment in the, you know, military repertoire, especially in those pieces that are written in 6-8 time signature. This type of sound. It's written in 6-8 and it sounds like this from slow to fast. Okay, another drag rudiment, which is called the Ratama cue, which I like a lot. I use it quite a bit when I play, you know, more in the bebop style of drumming. You know, his sound, his name is after the way it sounds. Shagadada, da 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 da, Ratama cue, Ratama cue. It's with a three plate. There's a drag at the beginning. I'll do it from slow to fast, and maybe when I get to the faster rate, I'll add some info. Up to this point, it still sounds kind of a, in a military way. But when I play it faster, I try to, you know, play the notes a little bit looser and uh, more legato. And uh, I try to do that because I want to get more of a jazz sound, which is a bit different, of course, than the, you know, military rudimental sound. So it's kind of, this is a concept that I use a lot. I use things, the sound, in a way, I try to make them sound different according to the style of music I'm playing. For example, and then I go back to the Ratama cue, going back to the Paradiddle, you know, more, the more military way would be like sounding kind of, to me at least, would be kind of more like... But that's not very jazzy to me, to playing like... Now all of a sudden we are you know, in a military field here, like the way we use a, a paradiddle in a more jazzy way, you know, one of the ways, to me would be more like See how the body, you know, motion changes from more vertical kind of to more circular, especially in the traditional, you know, grip my hand starts to do this. A great example is when, you know, Ged plays the, his paradiddlesque stuff between the hi-hat and, and the snare drum. You know, it is paradiddles and double strokes, but it sounds totally different. So having said that, and going back to the Ratama cue, this is my more jazzy, you know, bebop, you know, tribute to Fiji Jones version of the Ratama cue. Start slow with the military sound and go to the more jazzy sound. See what happens. More legato.
back to more staccato, back to the military way, back home. We all know that there's many, you know, number rolls, five stroke rolls, seven, nine, eleven, so on. I don't think I need to demonstrate them all. I just like to talk a little bit about how I conceptualize like the five stroke roll, for instance. And I want to show the basic body moves that one should do to play them correctly. So a five stroke roll, starting with the roll and alternating the leads should sound like this. Slow. And fast. Let's see what the basic moves would be. So if I don't play the bouncing strokes, I would have only this. which is up, step, down, up, step, down. If I let the up and tap moves bounce, then we have the roll. Up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down, up, tap, down. Because if I try to play them all with my wrists, this is what happens. So I can play them to some extent, but I get very stiff. But if I learn to just play the basic body motions and let the stick bounce, I can play much faster, but much smoother, which is really the point. And it's easier, once again, as I said in other lessons, regarding other rudiments, it's much easier to play in time because you're playing so it's easier at least to relate to the basic pulse just to demonstrate very quickly another roll let's see what the seven stroke roll would sound like so being seven strokes one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven the basic moves would be So I step up, step down. Feel it be your right hand. Now just letting the taps, the upstroke bounce. Which is much easier than trying to wrist them all. Left hand lead. So, if you want to le learn the rolls, to me, really, you should you know, understand what the basic moves are and then add the bounces. The flam is one of the most common and used rudiments, even if you don't know its name, because many drummers do this, which is basically play two strokes very close to each other. But in the, in the rudimental way of thinking about the flam, this is a grace note, it's much lower than the main note, and they should be almost unison, as close as possible. So this is what they call right hand flam. See how the grace note is much lower. When it's, you know, performing this low tempo, this is easy to do because the main note is so much higher. But when you get faster and the big note goes down a little, then, you know, problems may occur because sometimes it starts to be a unison. So that's the problem with the control of it. One thing that I wanted to address 
even when I play the grace note or the flames or, or the ghost note, however you want to look at it, I never play it inside the drum. I always come off the drum, which is the same thing I'm doing with this, but in a much lower scale. So it doesn't really look like that. But I'm not doing this. I'm coming off the drum. You know, Joe Morello used to be an expert of this technique. Off the drum. And when it's much lower, it's more difficult than from here, but, you know, just a little time and patience, and you'll develop it. So always off the drum. You know, we're leading with the left hand is the same. But what I really want to talk about is when you play alternate flames because there's a, a different problem here. <coughs> if I were to play alternate flames and wrist all the notes, which, which is what you should do when it's really slow, you know, basically is up here and down here, then the opposite. Up, down, up, down. So it's really this. So if I do this, very soon I get to a point where, you know, my hands can, cannot go any faster. Unless, you know, I figure out and break it down, figure out the way or a better way to do this, you know, I go into the fingers because the hand after a while, can go any faster. So if I use this, you know, basically, let me show you, let me play the alternate flame fast. What I'm really doing is this and this. So what they call push and pull nowadays, in between each other. So this is one hand, this is the other hand, this is unison. And now, so in a way, it's like playing single strokes using the technique of the double strokes. So this is single strokes using, you know, the double stroke technique. And this is, see, I'm starting to open and close the finger and here the index. So I can go, when I learn this, once I learn this, I can go fast and easy because it's not, it's not a big effort for the hand, it's just the fingers. It's really like this. So then, go back into the wrist. Paradiddle diddle. The paradiddle diddle is one of my favorite rudiments because it has a lot of potential for being used on the drum set. It's very similar to the double paradiddle because it's a paradiddle with six strokes, but instead of having four singles and a double, it has two singles and two doubles. So it sounds like this. Right, left, right, right, left, left. I'll play it from slow to fast and then talk about the mechanics. So let's see what the leading hand, in this case the right hand, is really doing. I'll play the left hand on my leg.
So I'm playing a double stroke, and then on the upstroke, I have a bounce, which is much easier to do than playing everything in one position. And it's making me stiff. Where, as I, if I use the bounce that I get from the downstroke, then I go back up and let the stick bounce again, I'm playing actually the swing pattern. Not only am I playing the swing pattern, but the stick is swinging like a seesaw. So this mechanical concept that I understood, you know, some years ago, really changed my life because it got me to a point where I was playing more like this. It was fast, but the notes were kind of, you know, choked and tight to playing like this. You hear the difference? Just the right hand. In the first case, which I see many drummers and many, many students, everything, once again, is done, is played only thinking about this part of the stick, without paying any attention to the back side and to this, you know, pendulum effect. You can clearly see it in the hands of Buddy Rich, for instance. Or if you notice, you know, the Weckl's hands, when he, you know, attack the drums, he, many times he's doing this, not this, because he's using the back part of the hand and of the stick in order to be looser, you know. When I go real fast, the fingers do what the hand was doing before. They open and close, open, close, up, down, open, close. The stick goes up and it goes down. Left hand lead. Down and up, down and up. See how I go underneath the drum? The pad in this case. It's not, you know, like this parallel all the way through. It has two sides. One last comment, when I do this, the swing pattern is actually exactly the same mechanic and number of notes that I would do if I played the Muller triplet. It's just a different rhythm, different spacing between the notes. This is a triplet, down, tap, up, this is the swing pattern. Down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. So it's really the same action. Drag paradiddle diddle. This is a quite difficult rudiment and it takes a lot of, you know, work to really develop it up to speed. And it's basically a paradiddle diddle with a drag, like its name, drag paradiddle diddle. Let's see how it sounds.
no real, real secret here, just a lot of practice. So enjoy. This is a rudiment that is based upon a very common rhythm. You know, we've been laughing here in the studio because I said that this is like the horse. The problem is that this is, this is a drag rudiment, really, lesson 25, and there's a drag before this big left hand note. So, in order to do that, you have to execute the drag while you do an upstroke. I'll do it, you know, I play my right hand here, so this is audible. German grip. So the only way to do this correctly and with the right sound and with the right ease and comfort is to, like I said in, in other rudiments, when I was talking about the double strokes, is to use the fingers. For German grip, you open and close with these fingers, with the traditional grip, you open and close with the index finger. Whatever you do with those fingers for the German or match grip, you do with the index finger for the traditional grip. They have the same role, although these are underneath the stick and this is on top of the stick, it's the same thing. The reason for this is because this is the only part of the hand that can react to the multiple bounces of the stick. There's no other way you can do this. You know, now with, with your arm, with your hand, you have to do to use the fingers here and this here. So I'm basically bouncing the stick here and playing an upstroke with a drag. As you can see, the motions stay the same even when it's faster. Let's do it with the left hand lead. Pata Flafla, a Swiss rudiment, I really enjoy playing it, especially on the drums, I do it in different ways, and this is how it goes. Right hand lead, up, down, up. Let's try the left hand lead. So we've been discussing a little bit about rudiments. 
And uh, I sincerely hope you find this to be helpful because I'm really just like anybody out there that is watching this. I spend a lot of time trying to seek information to help me, you know, being a better drummer, better musician, and a better teacher. So if I can help, you know, to some extent, some of you guys out there, then I'll be real glad. If you want to contact me for some questions, feel free to write me through my website, which is my name, tonyarco.com. Of course, I'm a, like everybody else. I have a Facebook artist page and also my personal page under my name, of course. And I'll be glad to answer your questions. And uh, until the next time.